So welcome again. Um, so we'll be having our very own Sandra who will come back and will be taking us, um, continue our journey. Uh, we took a small pause yesterday, um, so we can continue today. I'm hoping most of us have our questions written down from yesterday. Um, Sandra, I don't know if you want to start with the questions or you just want to start with what we have planned today and then move on from there. I would actually be happy to start with the questions. If anyone still has questions from yesterday, I noticed we had to stop, but there were questions in the chat. So maybe people are, yeah, have, you know, thought about it for a day and they have a question. So please ask. Okay. So if you have a question, this is the time to ask your question. Um, I think we can take questions from yesterday's uh, session. Um, we could take questions for the next um, maybe two, three minutes before we start today. Any question? If there is no question, we can always No questions. Ahead. Okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope more questions will come. So, all right. Well, thank you, Benedict. You gave an excellent introduction. And indeed, so today I will actually continue where we left off yesterday. Um, indeed, um, telling you how to create new items on Wikidata with OpenRefine. There was also someone who asked about monuments. So I did a bit of homework and I took a bit of data of monuments in the town where I live, Rotterdam, and I will dem demonstrate that with monuments in Rotterdam. Uh, so that's uh, also an answer to a question of yester yesterday. Um, and then I will indeed, hopefully, I think we will have the time for that, show you how to edit files on Wikimedia Commons, add structured data to files. I'm not sure if you've already talked about structured data and Commons, so maybe, yeah, we will get there. And then also uploading files to Commons. That is very experimental. So the last thing that I will show is very experimental. It's actually broken at this moment. <laughs> uh, we are building totally new code. It's not officially released yet, so it is still buggy. There are still bugs in the code. And uh, actually, at this moment, we have a bug that you can only upload one file at a time. So I cannot show a lot but I can so show the principle how it works. And um, also uh, I, I can give you pointers if you want to try it yourself uh, where you can find that information. Um, so today I, I'm actually continuing with the etherpad also that um, I also shared with you yesterday. That's It's the same etherpad, I added a few things, not a lot. Um, that's that has all the big links, you know, all the important links where you find more information. And like, um, I will start sharing my screen. Then um, you can also see what I, I can show you things. And of course, then I have to find the right window. Yes, it's this one. Okay. There we go. Yes, I'm just gonna drag around a bit so that I see your faces. I like to see your faces um, and your names. And I also want to make sure that I see the chats. Excuse me for the delay. Yes, I have the chat now as well. So I will probably not always see your message, messages in the chat, but I will again rely on the, on Benedict to <laughs> shout, or I will listen if, if someone unmutes themselves. Okay, um, so we continue also with the links in the etherpad here. Um, yeah, um, in total, we are spending three hours together here, and I can already show you a lot of things, but if you want to, you know, uh, go back and maybe you watch the video again, and you're like, I want to try all this stuff with OpenRefine, and I want to meet, I want to maybe do things that Sandra has never shown, um, I want to again say we have really good documentation uh, for OpenRefine and user documentation, which you can find here. Uh, we have a big user manual. And then there is also a lot of information about OpenRefine on um, various wikis. So I can also paste these in the chat. I don't know, maybe that looks terrible. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of text. Uh, well, it's also in the etherpad. Uh, we have tutorials for Wikidata on, on Wikidata itself. And we also have tutorials for Wikimedia Commons. So you can always go back and do it on your own pace, watch little videos, etc. So yeah, that's after this session, if you want to try it, then um, there's all sorts of materials for you. But now let's continue. Uh, I can, of course, now show you things live again. Um, so here we are again, good old OpenRefine. Uh, I opened it again in my browser. 
and uh, it is here. I'm here again at the start screen. And if you remember from yesterday, um, I can actually create start new projects in here, but I can also just go back to the old project that we did yesterday. Just uh, I click here on open project. And then yesterday I did the World Heritage Sites demo and I click it and I go to the project again. And then it's loading. And if all is well, we will see some of the things that we've done there, right? Um, today I'm gonna actually work with new data. Um, as I said earlier, I am actually going to work with data of new monuments in my hometown, Rotterdam. Um, I put a link in here. Um, so Rotterdam has a website, the city has a website, and there's information in Dutch in my native language about the monuments. And it's a little bit hard to find, but there is um, a list of new monuments here. Maybe, I don't know, in your country, you will have a similar thing, you know, that somewhere the government publishes a list of monuments, or you get it from an organization that takes care of, you know, heritage, etc. And as you can see, it's just um, a dress and then between brackets, yeah, I have to explain this a little bit because it's in Dutch. Uh, I, I, I can imagine you do not read Dutch. So it has the address, the street address, it has the neighborhood, and then it has the name of the, the monument and the year when it was built. Um, and there's a list of, you scroll down, how many are there, 36? Yes, 36. So what I did is I copied this, just copy paste from a website. You can also copy paste from, um, I don't know, uh, a document that you got or a Word document or a PDF copy. And I cleaned it a little bit already. Uh, you see that there are two lines per monument and I made it into one line. And I pasted that here at the bottom of the etherpad. So if you want to give it a try, you can use this data and try to re <laughs> reproduce what I did. I'm just gonna copy this. There's one line per monument, right? Um, yesterday, if you remember, I went to the website of UNESCO and I downloaded an Excel sheet. So that was already a very structured big data set, right? I could have also opened it in Excel and it would have been this big, big spreadsheet with a table, but this is just a list. Uh, that it's not a table, it's just a list. Um, and with this, I can show you now that you can even work with this kind of information in OpenRefine. So there, are, there's gonna be a little bit of repetition of all the tricks you can do with OpenRefine, but I think that will help you like uh, freshen up from yesterday. So I copied this to my clipboard of my computer and I am going to OpenRefine and I want to create a project with it. Mm -hmm. But I have it on my clipboards. Uh, it's in the memory of my computer. So I can actually go to clipboards. You have a clipboard option in OpenRefine. And there you can just paste. So when I am do doing control V, well, it's actually command V. I, I'm using a Mac, but it doesn't matter. And bam, I'm pasting uh, all the 36 lines that I had here. So I'm not even importing a file. I'm just pasting text, right? And I am going to start a project with this. Let me see. I made my screen really, really small. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I click next. And you see that now it doesn't make this nice big table. It just says, oh, I recognize a line and another line and another line. But that's cool. We can work with that. Um, and I am going to call it uh, Monument Rotterdam. Why not? Monuments Rotterdam, and it's actually the monuments that were added to the list in 2021, and this is a demo. I'm going to give it a tag. This is a repetition from yesterday. I'm creating a project now. And so that's also a little bit of repetition. I'm only seeing 10 rows at a time, but I can switch to 25 or even 50. Okay, now I have them all at the same time. And yeah, I would actually like to get a nice, really, you know, table. Huh? I would like to have a column with address. I would like to have a column with the neighborhoods. I would like to have a column with the name of the monuments and then a column with the year. Um, any idea how I will do this? <laughs> I will tell <laughs> you also have many, many ways in which you can split and 
put columns together. So you can split data very, very easily in Open Refine. So you can start with one column and then you can split it up in, in many different columns. And uh, it's if you if you did that before in Excel, it's actually very similar to that. We again go to the big menu on top of the column here, and then we say edit column split into several columns. And I'm going to go back here. I'm just looking at my data. What does it look, look like? I'm going to paste it in the chat too. Um, it looks like this. Okay. There's always the neighborhood between brackets. So I can use these brackets to split. I can say, okay, uh, open refine. If you see um, an open bracket, then make that make that a start of a new column. So that's what I'm going to tell it. Um, all right, so I'm going to do that. Edit column, split into several columns. And then I'm going to say my separator, let it be, I will say a space and uh, a bracket. Then it will, yeah, always look for a space and a bracket. And I wanted to split into a maximum of two columns. You see that you have many, many options here. You can ask it to remove the or keep the original, you know, long text that you had or remove it. I'm going to let it remove. Okay. And I can do the same with the closing brackets again. So you see that we now already have two columns. Uh, added column, uh, split into several columns. Okay. And I'm also going to say uh, close bracket and space. Split into two columns. All right, we also already have three columns. And then uh, we have a last thing where I see that here, the, you have the name of the, uh, of the building and then there's always a comma and then there's the year. And I can also use that comma to split. So maybe it will not be perfect, but let's try. Edit columns, split into several columns, comma. And I will use a space, split into two columns. Maybe there will be, ah, you see here that there is a little bit, a thingy that looks a little bit different. This one had two commas. So you see that uh, some text has moved right here, but otherwise this looks really good, right? Ta-da, we had a list and now we have uh, a spreadsheet. We have uh, a database with four columns. That's really nice. Um, why did I do the splitting? I basically, what I want to do is I want to show you how I would create new Wikidata items for each of these monuments. Um, let's say that I want to import these, all these monuments in Wikidata. They are all notable for Wikidata, so I could do that, but I'm not going to do it actually in practice because in the Netherlands, we have all the national monuments on Wikidata, but not yet the city monuments. So there's not really consensus about that yet. So I'm not actually going to do it, but I'm going to show you if I would want, want to do it, how I would do it. Um, I have this column here now with uh, the names of the, yeah, of the buildings. And that's actually what, for these, I want to create new items. Um, and I also have information about the address, so I can add that address information. And I can even add the information about the year when the building was built. I'm just going to change this one um, so that it's also a year. Um, I'm going to cut this out and remove this one. This point. Oh, why is it doing it? Yeah, that's what I want. And I am just going to say, I'm going to paste it here like this. So this is also repetition of um, what we saw yesterday, right? That you can edit cells, you can edit individual cells and uh, also more cells at the same time. Um, you also see here that is a little bit weird. I'm now repeating a little bit tricks in Open Refine and showing you a little bit of new tricks. You see here that sometimes this looks like it's green. And that means that Open Refine recognizes this as a number. And sometimes it's black and then it recognizes it as text. As text. So I can also modify that a little bit. Um, that's not compulsory, but I can say edit text, transform, common transforms to text. Maybe I just want it to be text because it's just the years. 
And then I see that Open Refine has kind of thought because it ended in a full stop that it's a number and it added the, the zero at the, at the end. So I can remove that. Um, I'm just showing you now a bit of typical things I do, like cleaning data. This is typical data cleaning, what I'm doing here. I'm now just going to take this 0, 0.0 because it doesn't make sense. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, a misinterpretation of the date. And I'm going to replace it with nothing. I'm just going to take it away. And now we have a very clean column with the dates, right? And a clean column with the names of the houses or the buildings a column with the neighborhoods and a column with um, the streets and the numbers where the buildings are. Um, because I split the columns, they, they never had a meaningful name. And it is actually nice for yourself that you give your columns meaningful names. So I will just quickly do that. I will say here, edit column, rename this column, and I'm going to name this one, not column 12221, but building. Okay, that's more meaningful. And this one, I'm going to say rename neighborhoods. All right. And here we have the year. Name this column. We go year. All right. And I'm going to rename this as um address all right cool now the thing i really want to show you is how do i create these new wikidata items um if you remember yesterday uh yesterday we worked with the um world heritage monuments so the world heritage sites and all of them already had a wikidata item and if you recall correctly uh what i did was i took a selection of heritage sites, and then I reconciled them. I was actually going to look up all the, you know, the names of the, of the sites, the heritage sites, sometimes national parks, sometimes buildings, looking, to, looking up those names on Wikidata with the reconciliation service. And now that I'm going to create new items, I'm actually going to do the exact same thing. I am also going to connect OpenRefine now to Wikidata with the reconciliation service. I do know that Open Refine will not find anything because the items haven't been created yet, but I still have to do this step. So I'm just going to repeat what I did yesterday, and it will soon make a bit more sense. Um, so I say uh, reconcile. I see a comment um, on the year column. I'm seeing some string of characters there. Yes, that's correct. There is one that actually has uh, a bit of text after it, I can also take that away um, because Wikidata will complain, oh, this is not a real year, right? So I can just remove that or I could move it to a different column if I want it. So that's a really, that's very, very well remarked that uh, you have eagle eyes. Well done. Um, okay, reconciling. Uh, if you recall, reconcile um, all the stars and flags. I forgot to tell about that. I will first tell about that. The stars and flags. That is just um, for yourself. It's like, um, I don't know, if you have, uh, if you're working with data and there are some rows that you are really interested in, um, just for yourself, you have already cleaned them up or I don't know, um, these are the specific rows that you want to work with. Then you can just click on, oh, let's say, I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to randomly click on a few rows here because these are the buildings that are my favorites, and I absolutely want to want to import these in my in open in uh, in Wikidata. I just click, and then I can filter facet by star, and then I get a facet here where where I say star is true, and I only have the five buildings that I start. It's only for yourself. This is just a way to say, oh, like your email in your mailbox, oh, this is an important email, I'm going to give a star or a flag, it's exactly the same thing. So, excellent question, and I had forgotten to tell you, and now you know. Thank you. So, yeah, and I can switch, of course, I can also take the ones that I did not uh, star or flag. Cool. Okay, 
I'm going to remove, but I'm going to keep the stars. Uh, maybe I will use them. Um, cool. Any more questions <laughs> before reconciliation? I think we're good. All right, then reconcile. Start reconciling. We did that yesterday already. I'm going to reconcile those buildings with uh, Wikidata, although I actually know that they don't have Wikidata items yet. Um, yeah, it kind of thinks it's like the electricity distribution substations, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to say start reconciling and let it do its thing. I tried earlier today and it went really fast, so I hope it does that again. Yeah, here we are. Um, it has, you see that it has, I think, made no match at all. You can also see that on, on the left here, you see a facet with judgment and judgment is mainly saying, did it match with Wikidata or not? Uh, and in most cases you will see uh, that that you have an option to select the ones that are already matched, but in this case, it found no none at all. And that makes sense because there's no Wikidata items about these things. Um, this actually looks good to me. Uh, I do think there is one that I have already created a Wikidata item for, and I'm gonna look for it. Um, this one, this is a pumping station and I'm gonna look it up. Okay, so we have one match, you see matched here, we can select only the matched ones and we can select the unmatched ones. I'm now selecting the, the ones that are not matched and I'm absolutely certain they don't have Wikidata items yet. Now I'm going to do a little trick here. Well, it's not a trick, it's basically what you always have to do when you create new items. I am going to tell OpenRefine, um, okay, you have tried to reconcile this with Wikidata, you have tried to find a link with Wikidata, you did not find a link. Instead, now you have to create new, new items for each of these selected ones, for each of these 35 that don't have a match on Wikidata, create a new item. And for that, I am going to the menu again, reconcile, and then I go to actions, and then I say, create a new item for each cell. And I click that. And now you see that um, my judgment facet here has changed again. The none has disappeared. Uh, there's matches everywhere. And there's actually 35 rows where you now see, maybe I can make it a little bit bigger, that you see it a little bit better, that there is a little new word behind every cell here. And um, you also see that the bar, the reconciliation bar, the green bar is filled with a little bit dark green. That's the one that already has a Wikidata item. And then the 35 that don't have a Wikidata item are light green. And that that's, shows that OpenRefine understands, oh, I there's one that has an item and 35 that you will want me to create an item for. Does that make sense so far? If not, please raise your hands, ask questions. Um, these are the basics. And from here on, it's actually exactly the same as yesterday. So now we are going to do the same as yesterday, uh, which was go to the schema, build a schema, and then show open refine hey this is how i want to you know make my items and then you can just do the edits and instead of adding information to existing items you will create new items yay so um a little bit of repetition again i will make it a little bit smaller here okay good i again go to the wikidata extension and i say edit wikibase schema so repeating from yesterday again Add item, and I am gonna drag here the building. I want to create a new item for each building. And I am actually going to, um, so all these buildings already have names here, right? So I'm going to use these as the Dutch labels for people who are familiar with Wikidata. Maybe you have to think a little bit like this is, you know, in the box on top, label, description, alias. I'm going to use that text for the label. Uh, so I say label and then in Dutch, because they are in Dutch. 
and I'm going to drag it again because then it's going to take that text, right, and use it as a label. I'm also going to say, give me a description. In Dutch, I'm going to write uh, the Dutch for building in Rotterdam, which is Gebouw in Rotterdam. So, a little bit of a Dutch lesson here. And why not an English one as well? An English description. And I can see building in Rotterdam. And now I am going to add statements. For instance, um, yesterday I did also a lot of dragging of all the columns. But as you see here, you can also type things. So you don't always have to drag, but you can also type. Um, I'm going to say it's a building, instance of building. Here we go, instance of building. And what else? So you see here that rather than dragging, I have just typed building and I looked up the Wikidata item for building. So you see here that it just searches Wikidata and you give it that item. Um, located in the administrative, yeah, you have to know your <laughs> property names in, in, in Wikidata, right? I'm going to say Rotterdam. Rotterdam, and I'm going to take the municipality, etc. Then I can say other things like country, the Netherlands, etc., etc. Netherlands. And maybe just one more. It's just a demo. We also have the address. So I can say street address, if it finds it. Yeah, here we go. Street address. And then you have to type the language as well. That's in Dutch. Dutch, and I drag the address. And it gives me a lot of issues. So I'm just going to check the is issues. Statements without references. I can actually add references because I still have um, that page here, which I can add as a reference. I have used this page as a source, so I can add this as a reference. Um, so I will say add reference, and then you say the reference URL is this one. And I retrieved it today. This is usually how I construct my references on Wikidata. And then you have to type it like this. We are August 27th, 27, no, not 28. And then oh, it's going to be annoying to <laughs> type that again, but you can just copy this reference and you can paste it everywhere. So that's really nice. And you see the number of issues going down. Ha, that's really nice. Uh, paste reference, ta-da. So now we only have 35 issues left. Just a warning that uh, Open Refine tells me, Sandra, you're going to create new items, but that's what I want. Yes, Open Refine, this is really good. And again, we can do a preview. So you see that for every row that we have here, it will create an item with a description in two languages with a country um, that it's a Rotterdam and the con uh, with the address as well that it's in Dutch. So basically this is how you create new items. I again would then uh, say upload edits to Wikibase, enter my username. Oh, normally it would fill, let me see. Yes, and then I'm logging in. And I'm going to give it an edit summary. Um, municipal monument in Rotterdam. And if I now would click upload edits, then it would just start creating new items. And uh, in a few minutes, we would have 35 new Wikidata items. Um, I see questions. Uh, I see a uh, raised hand, and I see a question in the chat. I will first go to the question in the chat. Does it also create a permalink for each item? Um, 
I'm not sure what you mean with that. Uh, um, maybe I should, I'm, I'm guessing if you referring to, um, if you create a link, like as in terms of page, um, yeah. um, then yes, it does because uh, just like every wiki, wiki data item, when you create yes. it, it assigns it uh, sort of like a, a unique yeah. ID number but that kind of like creates a page also. So yes, yes. It, it does that. It does that indeed. And actually after um, the items have been created, if you would go back to your project here in OpenRefine, you would see that the links are blue. So you would be able to click here and then go to the uh, Wikidata items that you just have created. So yes, um, that that is uh, hopefully a good answer to your question. Because I, I didn't do the upload for real, you don't see that, but uh, I guarantee you that it happens. Uh, so you get the links here directly as well. Um, yeah. Uh, By the I, way, ah, yes, go ahead. No, uh, Dave, I, I, if that was your question, because um, your hand is still raised up. Yes. If that's your question, that's a question you wanted to ask, um, then let us know if you answer that. Or if you have another question, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Dave, okay, yeah, go ahead. My question is, like, unlike we um, see that uh, most times when we are editing our uh, IP address, my contact get lost. So, open refine those those it as in who, who are our IP also get lost sometimes or how? I don't. That's my question. So can you repeat? I'm not sure, uh, Sandra, did you hear the question? Because I, I, I could not hear it, I'm sorry. Can you just repeat it? Um, let's let's just try one more time. Let's see if we can hear you. I think most times when we are existing in Wikidata, our IP address sometimes get blocked. So on open refine here now, how does it like, is it like also Wikidata, most times our IP address or Get blocked, something like that. Mm, yes, I got the question now. So, your if I understand if, if I understood it correctly, please uh, say if I didn't. You are asking. So sometimes when you do edits to Wikidata, your IP addresses get get blocked, and you are. I think you're asking if the same happens with Wikidata, uh, or sorry, with with OpenRefine. Um, and I think you're referring to the problem that you have as Africans a lot that uh, you sometimes cannot edit because of your IP addresses, is that correct? And I know that that is really annoying and I really hope that people are looking into that because it's, <laughs> it's, it's not good, um, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so you are actually editing open um, Wikidata through OpenRefine with your own account, with the same account that you would use if you would edit Wikidata by hand. So that's exactly the same. And it also registers exactly the, the IP address that you edit from. So if you are using OpenRefine from your home or from your university or your workplace, uh, wherever you are, um, it takes that IP address. So unfortunately it's not different. Um, I think there's one way in which you can actually um, solve it a little bit. And that is um, by using OpenRefine on pass. I would give that a try. Um, if you remember yesterday that I showed you that you can also run OpenRefine in the cloud. Um, yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> I, I really, yeah, I'm angry about it together with you. And I think, I really hope that uh, Wikimedia found a solution for that. Um, in any case, if you try OpenRefine on pass, maybe you don't have that, that problem because then OpenRefine will edit it from the Wikimedia cloud and not from your IP address. So you will still use your own user account. You, I will still edit as Spinster. Um, I don't know what your user account is. Uh, you will still use that one. So that will still be visible, but the IP address will be different. Give it a try. Um, I think for people in India, for instance, uh, I hear a lot of people from India who do that and who usually succeed in, in uh, using OpenRefine to do batch uploads that way. So I would be curious to hear if that, that helps a little bit. Um, yeah. You could just use the, the version on pass the same as I demoed to you here with my local version. Uh, it works exactly the same. So 
um, should be no problem. Yeah, I also agree with you. I think that might, that, that will work. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that will work. But it's also important to point out that if you block, if your account is blocked already, you still can't do it regardless. Um, so unless it's like an IP block, then um, I think the using pause will work. But yep. if your account uh, as a user is blocked already, then um, obviously you can't use that account to make edits. Exactly, yeah. No, I think that that was an excellent question. <laughs> yeah, and uh, thanks for asking it. And yes, that's, yeah. that's, that's a very yeah. wonderful question. Yeah, I think it's also important for me to know these things. I Yeah, it's one of the reasons why this version on Pulse is so important. And I want to make clear, um, so this version of Open Refine on Pass, it's actually not installed by us. It's not installed by the Open Refine team. It's other people who, who manage this Pass thing. So um, sometimes it's a little bit behind. We sometimes release a new version of Open Refine, and then it takes a few weeks before it's on Pass. And we try to be in touch with the people who do, who do the Pass thing. And they are usually really quick, but sometimes, yeah, uh, yeah, there's things that they are too busy with other things. So, um, yeah, we try to have it also up to date, but sometimes it can be a little bit behind, um, but we do our best. Um, I also see the question, is OpenRefine limited to some countries? In principle, no, you should be able to use it from everywhere. So uh, that should be no problem. You should be able to download it from anywhere um, if your computer allows it. And uh, also the version on pause, I think you should be able to run that from any country. If not, I would be really interested to hear if it doesn't work for you and why, why it wouldn't be, because it should work for everyone. So yeah, thanks for these questions. Um, OK, well, for the last short hour. Um, now we move on to Wikimedia Commons. And I actually don't know very well how much you already as a group have looked at Wikimedia Commons and at structured data on Wikimedia Commons. Um, does that, is it needed that I give a little introduction about it or not at all or? Yeah, um, an, an introduction would be nice. Yeah. Um, to just give like a background. All right. So everybody be on the same then, page. Um, I will go to Wikimedia Commons and I will actually also add the link to the Etherpad later. Um, so I'm going to put this one in the chat. I think many of you know Wikimedia Commons. Eh? So I will show you um, files that I, oh, this is a nice one. <laughs> uh, this is a file that I uploaded earlier today. Uh, you have Wikimedia Commons is the place where we have all the pictures and videos and uh, the PDFs and etc. of Wikipedia and many, many more. Like I think it's already 80, 80 million files there. And uh, anyone can upload files there. Maybe you are working on, uh, I don't know, Wikilove's Earth, Wikilove's Africa campaigns, and that's where uh, people upload their materials. Um, a few years ago, uh, I don't know if Eugene is in the room, by the way. <laughs> uh, if he is, then I will give a big shout to him. Uh, a few years ago, we have, we've added, uh, the Wikimedia movement has added uh, a bit of new features to Wikimedia Commons, which is called structured data, that you can describe files on Wikimedia Commons with multilingual data from Wikidata. So as you can see, this one file that I show here, uh, it's a very small photo of a Dutch architect. And I have described this in Dutch. Um, I have just written information about it in Dutch on, on uh, Wikimedia Commons. So if you speak English or another language, this explanation, the text about it probably doesn't make sense to you. But um, since we have added structured data to files, you can also describe the files with data from Wikidata, which makes them multilingual. And um, you can see that here, it's quite subtle. So you have this photo here and you scroll down, you see a bit of information about the file here that is just the wiki text information. Um, but then if you um, look right under the image, then you see 
a tab with file information and you'd see a tab with structured data. And if you click the structured data, then you see that there is information that looks a lot like uh, Wikidata. And um, basically, this is information that um, yeah, links to Wikidata. So if I open this in a new tab, then you see that this is the name of that architect, that person that is in, uh, in the photo. Of course, his name is the same in every language, but if there would be, I don't know, a flower or uh, a mountain or, I don't know, something else, uh, a city in the, in the picture, then I would go to the Wikidata item and I would see the names in all the languages. Um, it also makes sure that you can search for things in many languages. Um, oh, I don't have an example ready now. Uh, I'm just going to search for this. No, that's not a good idea. Um, I'm going to search for one building that this architect made, and I'm going to search for it in, in English. Cube houses. He, he designed cube houses. Um, we have now also have new search. This is a quite new search uh, on Wikidata, where you mainly see the pictures. And you see that I've now searched in English and I get lots of pictures of these buildings. But if I search in Dutch, I should see almost the same. That's because all these buildings are connected to Wikidata. Um, and it is already giving me a suggestion. Now it's a bit more results because I think some of these also have text in Dutch and that makes them uh, drift a bit more to the top. So, but basically this helps you find information on Wikimedia Commons files on Wikimedia Commons in more and more languages. And um, yeah, that's uh, why we do structured data. And it is very helpful to have structured data for uh, files on Wikimedia Commons. Um, maybe some of you have already all also uh, participated in tagging contests. Uh, Eugene, who was actually in the room yesterday, has worked on a tool. Um, I'm just going to give, give a bit of uh, publicity here. You can add structured data to files in many ways. Uh, you can go to, uh, let me see, to a, to a file here. And I am going to click on it. And then you can go to structured data and you can, oh, there's actually also another building. Um, you can type and edit it right here. Hmm. It's called, this, this building is also in the picture. So this is how you edit. But of course, that takes a lot of time going to every single image and then, you know, saying what is in the image and typing it by hand. So on the information page about structured data, you also see, um, if you scroll a bit down, all sorts of tools. And I should really add Open Refinder now as well. Um, one of the tools has been built by uh, our friend Eugene. Um, it is a tool that you can use on your smartphone where you see picture by picture and then you can type what you see and that will be added as structured data. Now I'm giving a bit of publicity about a different tool that is not open refined, but uh, I am very proud that <laughs> this tool exists as well. So um, that's yeah one way to add structured data, but you can also use open refine to add structured data to files. So I was, I thought I will actually give you a demo with, um, let's say, this category here. Um, this is a national park in Rwanda. I don't know if there are people from Rwanda here in the room, but I just uh, accidentally found that one while I was using uh, the data set with uh, uh, World Heritage. This, this was one that just came up and I thought, let's let's try this. Um, so this is a category on Wikimedia Commons. If you used Wikimedia Commons before, you may have already used categories. Um, and there are many pictures from that national park. You see a bridge here, you see different flowers, and you see a baboon, a baby baboon, quite nice. So all these pictures have been made in the national park. And some of them show the national park, some of them show the detail of the park, etc. Um, and 
I actually want to add that as structured data. How do I do that with Open Refine? Well, um, I am going to go back to the start screen. And um, yeah, one thing, this is still experimental. It's not officially released yet. Uh, we have created a Wikimedia Commons extension for Open Refine. Um, so Open Refine is a little bit like other, sometimes other pieces of software. You have the, the software itself, but you can have plugins into the software. Also free of charge, uh, you can download extra software that integrates with it. And we have a Commons extension. I hope it will work because it's all uh, under construction. And there you can type the name of the category and I am going to say next, and then it will load all the files from there. Um, so now I have all the files from that category, and I am going to say, OK, um, I'm going to give my project a name, creating the project. Here we go. And this is the same as you know all the other situations we had before. I am creating a data set from scratch. Um, with you know uh, a list of file names um and so here what i'm going to do here is i'm not going to edit wikidata now i am going to edit wikimedia commons um so i basically have to tell open refine oh open refine you are until now you have been working with wikidata but now you have to edit another website um I, I'm going to make you aware of this other website and I'm going to switch you to that website. How do I do that? Um, I go here to the Wikidata extension and I say select Wiki, Wikibase instance. And I'm just going to remove this one because by default, Open Refine allows you to edit Wikidata, but it doesn't know about any other websites. It doesn't know about Wikimedia Commons. There are also other websites that use the same software um, that you can add to Open Refine, but it doesn't know about these. So um, I, it only knows Wikidata, but then it says you can add another Wikibase. Um, in this case, I want to add Wikimedia Commons. And there's a button that says Discover Wikibase Instances. It's a, a little bit, it sounds a little bit weird or complicated, but basically then you go to a GitHub repository where you find various, this is maybe a little bit <laughs> like a specialized, it's all also explained on, on the wikis. Um, you'll find one for Wikimedia Commons here. You click that one and you see that there is, um, for the developers in the room, there is a, uh, like a blob of JSON code that basically has all the basic information about Wikimedia Commons that, you know, uh, it is uh, called Wikimedia Commons. It has information about its API. Um, it has, yeah, all sorts of, you know, properties that you need to know about, etc. So I'm just going to copy this. And I am going to paste it here um, at Wikibase. And I'm going to paste the JSON here at Wikibase. And now I have Wikimedia Commons in the list and I'm going to select it. And now Open Refine is aware that it is going to work with Wikimedia Commons. Um, and I am going to do exactly the same thing. Um, I want to edit these files on Wikimedia Commons and I want to add info information from Wikidata to it, right? I want to add structured data to it. So um, in a minute, I will come back to the questions after the demo. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is, again, reconcile. That's always the first thing I do when I, you know, want to do edits and I have a column of things that I want to edit in Wiki, Wikidata, Wikimedia Commons. I am going to reconcile looking up the thing on that Wiki. With Wikidata, we, we did reconciling with Wiki, with Wikidata. <laughs> that makes sense, right? So you had the blue links that made the link to Wikidata. And now we will do the same for Wikimedia Commons. I am saying reconcile, start reconciling. And now, because I have added Wikimedia Commons, it also has a Wikimedia Commons reconciliation service. And that one has also been built by Eugene, by the way. So if Eugene is in the room, there's a lot of his work that is being shown here now. I'm clicking Wikimedia Commons. Um, yeah, this screen is 
can be improved. It's, it's not meaningful. You just click start reconciling. And basically what happens now is rather than looking up on Wikidata, um, OpenRefine and the reconciliation service has been searching on Wikimedia Commons for these file names. And it has done that. And you see that now every file name has become blue and we can click it and we go to the file. So OpenRefine is now aware of the link of every one of these files, and it can then go to that link and edit it, right? I hope that makes sense. It's basically the same as we did for Wikidata, the reconciliation. You also do it for Wikimedia Commons. And I just want to do a very simple thing. I could have a situation where I do lots of complicated things. Um, I can, I actually want to show you, I'm looking at the time as well. Okay, I'm going to show you one thing that is actually really important. Um, all these files have, if you look at it, um, and if you have edited Wikimedia Commons before, you may be um, aware that uh, the files often have a lot of information already in the source of the, of the, of the page. So if you click Edit Source here, then you get all the wiki text of that file. And in this case, it's a really good example. It is actually an aerial photograph or even a satellite photo of the park. And it comes from NASA, um, space agency in, in, the U, in the United States. And there's a lot of information in here. You see the date when it was made, that photo, you see where it comes from. And I can actually look at this photo, this is maybe uploaded by a Wikimedia, I can imagine. It's a really nice photo. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Beautiful. This one is very simple, but it's still also interesting. You see when the photo was created. Um, it's a photo from 2021. This is interesting. You can maybe also use that. You may, Maybe some of the, is it, this information is also something you want to add to the structured data. So I am now going to actually extract the wiki text, what we had here. This, I'm going to extract that to also have it in a column in OpenRefine. And for that, I am doing reconcile, um, no, no, um, edit column, add columns from reconciled values. This is a little bit you have to look for, <laughs> that's, that's a command, I always have to look for it myself. Edit column, add columns from reconciled values. And then I can select the wiki text. The preview sometimes, the API is sometimes not super responsive. Yes. And you see here that it will retrieve the wiki text from the files. And maybe I can also say oh, location of creation. Why not? Um, yeah, sometimes it gives error messages. I think that's also, yeah, that sometimes the connection with the API is not going well. I'm still going to click OK. And in a few seconds, if all is well, ah, yeah, we had an error. Uh, yeah, some columns have gone well, or some files. You see that some files, it, there's some bugs still in here, uh, but some files you have gotten, uh, you see here, have gotten uh, the wiki text. And um, I don't think any file already has a location of creation. And that is information I want to add in structured data. Um, you do see that some of the files have been created in the Wikilofs Earth 2020 campaigns. And that is also interesting. So you can actually filter the wiki text now. I'm going to search and I am going to try to find the Wikilofs Earth files. There's three files that come from Wikilofs Earth campaign. And that's, yeah, that's also maybe interesting, maybe something you also want to add in the structured data at some point. Um, so I think this is interesting. Um, I sometimes go to a list of files on Wikimedia Commons, and then I take the wiki text, and I sometimes then use OpenRefine to take bits of information from that wiki text to also put into structured data. Um, now, for the example now, I'm going to keep it quite simple. Uh, I am going to the schema again. Um, I can go to the wiki, to the schema here, edit wiki based schema. And I, in this case, because I am now, I have now told OpenRefine, hey, 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 you are working with Wikimedia Commons, not with Wikidata. 
it actually says not at item, but it says at media. And I can take my first column, which was the file name, I should actually rename it. Uh, that's why you rename columns, because column one doesn't say a thing. It's good that you have meaningful names, but yeah, we know column one is the file name. And I want to do some things with the file name. Um, this is basically information that you need to give when you upload new files. So I will show that in, I think, 10 minutes or something. Um, the only thing I want to add to the existing files, we have existing files, is I'm going to say location of creation is this national park. And let me see what it was again. It was the Nyungwe Forest National Park. Let's see. I'm going to look up that Wikidata item. Nyungwe Forest. Yeah, that's the one. I want to add this to all the files. And I am actually now going to do that edit. I am. This is not a test. This is not just showing you. I am actually going to do it because this is good information that I'm adding. It's correct. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, so now I say, oh yeah, of course I can preview it first. Um, you see exactly the same thing that um, we have uh, the file, the file name, and it is going to add the statement, but it's going to add it on the file on Wikimedia Commons, not on Wikidata. I am now saying upload edits to Wikibase, and I am logging in. Here we go. Okay, and I am adding the statement location of creation. And now I'm actually doing edits on Wikimedia Commons. You see that it has done one, two, and three. There was a little yellow box on top that showed me the status for these three files. And now, if I go to the file, I can go to its file or its edit history, and you can see that I did an edit here, right? Uh, just today, I created the claim location of creation is Nyungwe Forest. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. And let's just check if indeed the statement is there. Structure data. And it should be at the bottom somewhere. This is what I just added with OpenRefine. So this is how you edit Wikimedia Commons. I think um, it has still some com complicated things in it, in the sense you need to be aware that you need to add Wikimedia Commons with this manifest thing. Um, and the reconciliation is maybe a little bit weird. So I hope <laughs> you got that. If you want us to read about the process again, I can recommend you. I created a tutorial here, um, which is basically what I just showed you, but explained again in step by step. So uh, if you want to try it again and you, you're like, that went really fast and Sandra did it in 10 minutes, I want to try it myself. Um, this is, uh, yeah, uh, instructions on how you can do it at your own pace. Um, let me first go to the questions that have come in between, and then I can switch to the last part, which is uploading new files. Um, and that's not very different from what we've seen so far, but that's just the last step. Um, how do I use OpenRefine to edit my file on Wikidata? So Wikidata does not have files itself. Um, on Wikidata, you can have, let me just see, um, maybe I can go to, the Wikidata item of the National Park. So in the first part of the demonstration that I gave, I showed you how to edit Wikidata. Huh? So uh, you use OpenRefine to edit Wikidata. And maybe your question means um, how you add images to Wikidata. Like if, um, like in this case, you have an image that has, uh, that is like a satellite image and a very beautiful photo of a sunset or a sunrise actually. Um, how you add those with uh, OpenRefine. Basically, you would do that. Um, poof, that's a good question. If um, 
you would have, for instance, I'm now going back to the projects here. Uh, I'm going to open the project again of the World Heritage Sites. Um, if you would have a column in here with the file names on Wikimedia Commons, if that makes sense. So each, so each of these two photos have a file name, this one. And if you have a column with that, you would add that to the item. I can actually, um, mm, I don't think I can demo that to you. Like I don't have the data ready, but that's how you would do it. So you would have a column here that has something like file or photo or something like that. And then you would have a file column and you would add that. I hope that makes sense. Um, you mainly use uh, OpenRefine to add other structure data to Wikidata and not so much to add pictures, but it is certainly possible. Um, and it is a good question, but it is a little, it's a little bit more advanced. Uh, I hope that's, uh, that's at least a little bit of an answer to your question. That's from Ernest. And I saw a question before that as well. Uh, oh yeah, also er Ernest, you try to download and install OpenRefine. I'm not sure um, if you use a Windows computer, that is quite possible. I sometimes hear that people on Windows don't fully succeed on uh, installing OpenRefine. And we do have two versions of OpenRefine for Windows. And I will recommend you to actually, if you go to the download page, to take the one with embedded Java. That usually works best. If you try that one again, then, and if that one doesn't work, then we need to look into it. <laughs> um, so yeah. I would actually have to see your computer to see what exactly has been, has gone wrong. So uh, I hope this fixes the problem, at least. I know that most people first try the first one and that doesn't work and then they try the second one. So uh, I hope uh, that can help you. Cool. Are there any more questions? I'm just scrolling back a bit. I don't think there is any more question on the chat. I think you've answered all. Oh. All right, perfect. Then I can actually move on to the last dem demonstration. Um, I don't think it will take very long time, so we will still have question sorry, time sorry, after that. More, one more question, just for ah, yes, uh, yes, that in I those see. Ah yes, extensions like CSV, Excel, but uh, I didn't but see they, PDF. They didn't see PDF. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good question. Also, yeah, so we indeed do not import uh, from PDF. Um, because yeah, PDFs can be anything. It can be a lot of text, it can be pictures, there can be structured data in a PDF, but sometimes not. Um, usually if you have a PDF with data in it, um, there are other tools, not OpenRefine, but other tools um, that you can use to extract data from your PDF. And then you can take it to your clipboard, for instance, and then paste it into OpenRefine. Um, PDFs are really hard because they can be almost anything. Um, but I do understand your question because I also see it a lot that sometimes you get data like this that we have in front of us here, you know, like the one from UNESCO, but you get it in a PDF and what do you do with it? There are scripts that first you take the PDF, you extract the data, and then you can import that data into OpenRefine. Um, yeah. It's too complicated to program that for OpenRefine specifically, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, that's an excellent question too. I think uh, it makes a lot of sense. Good. Well, then I will continue to the last part, which is uploading images. And as I said, um, we are building that now. Uh, so it is really, really new. And it is actually not officially in OpenRefine yet. So, if you go to the download of OpenRefine, you will actually download our latest version, which is 3.6.1. This is the latest stable version. Um, you can only upload files with 3.7. Um, 3.7 is the experimental new fresh code, which we publish in snapshot releases. Um, I have a big explanation about, okay, let me see if I can open this in a new tab. Yeah, um, 
I have a very big Google Doc with all the explanation on where to download 3.7. It is basically the fresh code from yesterday that you will be using to do an upload. Um, so uh, there are download instructions here that basically uh, give you a link to um, our GitHub. And under our GitHub, you have a header that allows you in the same way to download the, the different version of Open Refine. But if you download this, it will not be the 3.6.1, but it will be the code that you know our developers made, the, the last code of yesterday evening that was packaged automatically and uh, a version of yesterday. It can be buggy. So at this moment, we have a bug that you can only upload one file at a time. We are fixing that. Uh, so it's always under construction. Um, we will officially release 3.7, hopefully the end of October. So what you are seeing now is very, very experimental. It is not official yet. And uh, yeah, I will repeat it again. It is buggy, <laughs> but uh, it's what we are working on. So, um, and some people have already uploaded files with, with this. So it is already working sometimes, but not always. Um, I have prepared a project for you. Uh, let me see which one it was. I have a mini test upload here. I think it's this one. And one of my uploads has succeeded and the others not yet. Yeah, um, cool. I will actually um, throw away my reconciliation data. This is um, another project in OpenRefine with five photos that I took myself. Ah, can I show them to you? Not really. Uh, I can, I can show them in a second. Um, these are just photos I took with my mobile phone. I was walking around in the Netherlands and visiting places and taking photos. And I have um, a project in Open Refine here um, where I have um, the path to where the photo is on my local hard drive. So this is um, where the photo is on my local computer here. Then I have a column, I have made a column of the name that I want it to be on Wikimedia Commons. And then I have added some other information that I want to add to the file. Like um, I have a file, a caption for the file. That is the thing that you enter. Uh, let me see right here. This is empty in this case. This is a place where you add a caption. I'm actually going to enter a caption now by hand. Mm. Clouds over Nyungwe Forest National Park. The caption is basically just a, so a short text that you can put under an image. It also helps to find the image on Wikimedia Commons. So you can have captions in many languages. And in my data here in OpenRefine, I have prepared captions for every one of these files. Um, I don't have a column yet to when the files were created. Uh, yeah, that's not super important. And then I have, um, in some cases, the thing that it shows. I have two files that show a sculpture in a city here. I have one file that shows um, a Korean kind of statue. So it shows one of these kinds of statues. A, I don't know how to pronounce this, a Dol Harubang. My Korean is non-existent. These are these specific statues. I also have a picture of that. Um, and then um, I also made a column with the place where I made the photos. So some of the photos I made in, oh, this is actually not, not here yet. I made this in uh, The Hague, in the city of The Hague. So I can add that as well. See that we also have a bug that this this with this little pop up doesn't go away. Okay, and then I also prepared the column with the wiki text that I want to go with the image. So um, what you have here is a combination of what I eventually want to be in the file here of this kind of information. So the wiki texts. This, this bit I have added in this column. I hope that makes sense. 
but all the rest is the structured data that I want to be available for the file. So the rest is both uh, the caption here that is structured data, and then I also have the other structured data that I wanted to add. Um, I see a question in the chat. Um, is it a number of the version or what? I think this is, I think um, Yusuf is referring to the number in terms of the um, version you um, you use in the experimental version, which is, I think, is a 3.7 as yes. a version. Yeah. Um, so I, um, just to show more lights for those who don't understand, a 3.7 is not released yet officially. Yes. It's just, it's still in development. So the CD version is the 3.6.1. Uh, that is a steady version. The one that does not have bugs or that is steady enough to for for you to use. Exactly. Or if you want to try out this new feature, she, um, Sandra is talking about, you have to have download that of three point seven. Warning: It's still not released yet. You will see plenty of bugs. So please take notes. Thank you. That was absolutely perfect and better than I explained it. <laughs> Thank you so much. And there was also a question from, I think, Ibrahim, but I saw that he raised his hand again. So I will just wait a I second. I think his hand is down. Maybe he was trying to ask the same question. So yeah. Yes. And that's correct. The 3.7 is still a trial version. So it is, um, yeah, basically, we are working on it. We are improving it, but it's not finished yet. So yeah, um, it's experimental <laughs> danger. Uh, well, it will not break your computer or anything, but uh, you have to expect that it's not working as perfectly as, as you would hope it would be. Um, so, yeah, going back to the example and to the demo of uploading for uh, the last part of, of the session. Uh, so I do have this column with wiki texts and I have some things that I want to add as structured data. And then I also have the file name that I want to give it on Wikimedia Commons, and I have the place on my computer. OpenRefine needs to know that, right? So you have to imagine at some point, I will tell OpenRefine, upload these files. Then OpenRefine needs to know where on Sandra's computer should I actually go and find you know, the files. It's, you know, you have to tell it that. So that's why I have this path here. And for the file names, I also, again, have to do the same thing. I I have to tell OpenRefine, just like with creating new items on Wikidata, I also have to tell it, hey, now you are going to create new items, files on Wikimedia Commons. Um, let's look them up. Um, we are, uh, we have to reconcile again. Um, and this time again with Wikimedia Commons. So I am going to go to reconcile, start reconciling. I select Wikimedia Commons, built by Eugene, and then, yeah, one upload was already successful. So this uh, is a file that was already uploaded by uh, OpenRefine by me yesterday. This one has been successful. So you see it has, I've been able to add um, two captions to it. And then I've also been able to add structured data to it, which is, successful. I'm very happy to see that. But uh, the others <laughs> haven't worked yet. Um, so you see here that it has just the same as with Wikidata. These files don't exist yet. I want to upload them. So they are still on my computer, but not yet on Wikimedia Commons. So just the same as previous time. Um, and again, here we have the bug of the wind of the little <laughs> pop-up staying around that has to disappear. Um, here again, I have to tell for the ones that's, oh, and this is annoying, it's in the wrong place. Let me see. I can do it like this, maybe it will go away then. Oh, yeah, I will leave it. I will select the ones that haven't been matched. Oh, yeah, okay gonna match this one. So we have four, that's uh, open refine, the reconciliation service does not recognize the file names and that's logical because they, ha they have to be created new, they are new files. 
Um, here again, I will do the same thing as I did earlier today. I go to reconcile actions and I say create a new item for each cell. Basically, exactly the same. Make a new item, make a new file, upload a new file to Wikimedia Commons. And then I am again going to the schema. I've already filled it, <laughs> but uh, I can show you just the most important things again. Um, you remember that I skipped over this when um, I did edits to existing files. Now that we upload new files, you certainly have to give it, um, you have to say, okay, the file name, this column here, ah, yeah, I have to select the new ones here. This column, you have to create new files for them. And then you give it the file path. You tell it what file name you want it to be on Wikimedia Commons. So when it uploads to Wikimedia Commons, it will give the files this name and that you um, specified in this column. I'm going back to the schema now. I am also dragging the wiki text and I am dragging my captions. And now I can also go to the issues and then it's tells me, Sandra, you will upload new media files. Well, yes, that's what I want. Thank you, Operify, this is correct. And I can look at the preview and this looks quite good. So it shows me my file path. It gives me the name that my file will have. And it shows me all the structured data. I'm gonna give it a try. It's, this is where it's buggy. So it will probably stay, stick at no, at 0% and it will not do anything, but um, who knows, maybe it has been fixed so far. Um, I'm gonna say upload edits. And yeah, if the bug is fixed, it will, the counter will go up and it will upload the files to Wikimedia Commons. Um, yeah. That's basically how it works. I'm very sorry that it, this last bit that we have a bug here because that's a little bit of a downer. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as I said, it's experimental code and uh, we are still working on it. Um, the, as, I, as I said, I will repeat, we plan to have this ready by the end of October, 2022. So what you've seen so far, the work on Wikimedia Commons, what you can, all the things that you can do with Wikimedia Commons, uh, that is very, very new. All of that is really new. Uh, that is something we have added to Operify in the last year, uh, actually thanks to a grant from the Wikimedia Foundation. So that has been a project of a year where we did a lot of development to add that. The Wikidata part was already there, but not yet the Wikimedia Commons part. And we are now finishing that, that project. So two more months and um, it should be up and running for everyone. Um, so yeah. Um, I will repeat if you want to try it yourself, uh, you can afterwards rewatch my the recording with me, but um, in the etherpad there are links to very detailed tutorials step by step, um, so you can follow the tutorials as well. Um, another plan that I have is um, I will also create online courses um, so that you can learn to use Operifine uh, in an online course step by step on your own pace as well. That will probably come after October, but uh, I will, yeah, try to keep in mind to to tell your group that as soon as the courses are there, that you can try them out. Um, so, uh, yeah, of Thank course, you. this three hours was very short and very quick, but uh, there will also be ways to do it on your own pace. Thank um, you so much, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you. Really, words are not enough to thank you for this. I keep saying eye opening because I. I keep imagining the things one could do with, with this. And to be honest, uh, seriously, I, I don't know. I just keep seeing like my eyes, I work with data a lot. So I could just see like the different things I could play with. And of course I want to encourage everyone to, I mean, practice, practice, practice. Uh, you, can, you can never go wrong with practice. I mean, so practice makes perfect. Um, yes. So yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I need to stop this recording. Okay, before that, um, does anyone have any question before um, we continue? Um, any question as regards what we've learned so far? Um, just a brief summary. Yesterday we saw what OpenRefine is. 
we took um, a dive into open refine we saw how to play with open refine or we played with open refine with sandra um we saw some data how to how to select some data see just some data clean up with some data we also saw how to add these data on wikidata we also saw how to um and today we also saw something new which is add this on wiki command as well uh, make edits on wiki commons um i could see a hand raised up daniel um daniel, if you have a question please uh, feel free to unmute yourself and ask the question the floor is yours I'm not sure I can hear Daniel. No. All right. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. I think you're having network uh, issues. Hello. It's cracking. Yeah, Hello. go ahead. Hello. Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah, just go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. It's a bit choppy, but let's do it. Okay, um, this uh, open refine is it just cloud based? Is it okay? Is it just cloud based or it can be used offline? It can also be used offline, yes. Well, if you want to do things with Wikidata and Wikimedia here? Commons, you need internet, of course, but you can do the basic things offline. I heard that you continued your question. I'm sorry. No, he's he was actually he thought you didn't get the question, but I think he did get the question. Um, like um, Sandra was saying earlier on, you can download this, um, the Open Refine. Uh, if you're using Windows, um, you have two options there, one with the embedded Java and the other without uh, the embedded Java. If you try without the embedded Java in it, uh, if that doesn't work for you, try downloading that of embedded uh, with the embedded Java. If you're using Windows um, for Linux and Mac, um, I think yours is just straightforward. Um, yeah. Also, um, if you're planning on going to make me making edits on Wikidata from OpenRefine, then you have to be online. But yeah. if you're just looking at doing your day-to-day -day activity, um, your play, working with your data without going online, then that's fine. The downloaded version is there for you. And one other option she mentioned was that um, if you if you're like me, that maybe you have you don't have um, a very solid laptop or desktop. Um, but you prefer to just have to play with this or to be use open refine to do your work. Um, there is an online version um, that you can always use on pause. Um, so you can always use that version. Uh, it's on the it's also on the on, a, on the other part. You can see the link there. Um, I shared the link on the chat as well. So you can use that. It's sort of like if you've used um, for those that have used Google Collab before, it's kind of like Google Collab, but um, it has more uh, Pulse has more installed um, um, softwares or applications than Google Collab. Google Collab, I think, is just for Python. Um, but uh, with Pulse, you can have um, softwares like OpenRefine there. So that's for if you don't uh, want to install it on your laptop, you can do that on the online version. Um, I think one other hand is raised up. Abraka, um, feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, if you're speaking, you're still muted. Um, feel free to unmute yourself. Just click on the mic button to unmute yourself. Okay, I don't think he can hear me anymore. Mm -hmm. okay. Daniel, your hand is up. All right. Um, yesterday, someone asked a question of, um, like, what can we do with this in Africa, in this in the street of Nigeria, something like that? And you promised to throw more light on it after the meeting. But I believe it escaped your mind. So please, can you do your thing for that? I'm trying to remember the question, but the question the person asked. But um, if it's on how to use how OpenRefine can be used on on the African, I mean, with African data, 
um, basically, the same way uh, Sandra have shown you, shown us how to use that. She gave us uh, different examples how she is uploading her own the pictures she took by herself. Um, if you take pictures yourself, I mean, Africans, we have so many beautiful sites, so many natural sites you can take pictures of. And um, for that, that is still experimental if you're using the 3.7 version, um, using Open Refine. But another thing you can do also is if you have a data, a, um, a file, a, data, a collection of data um, that is maybe still even dirty, um, that, is, that needs a little bit more cleaning before you upload, Open Refine, you can use Open Refine, just use the same step that Sandra has shown us um, to do that. You can clean up the data, you can even split them into different columns if you want. And also, you can also um, up upload those data into Wikidata. Well, one thing you always want to be sure first is make sure that those data does not exist already on, on Wikidata. And OpenRefine kind of do, does that because once you do the data reconciliation, it checks if those data already exist. So you also want to also double check because sometimes um, the information you want to upload might be bearing a different name. So that is also um, some reason why you need to also check to be sure it doesn't exist already on Wikidata to avoid mm -hmm. duplicates. Yeah. Yes, I think that answers it. Um, I think my question would be on um, in terms of the open refine. Uh, I, 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 is it built on Java or does yes. it yeah. also it's yeah. built on Java? Okay. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. Because I was wondering um, how, um, of course, like uh, you know, this is Wikimedia Africa. So um, the aim of having this is to get people excited, pumped, um, to see how they can contribute, not just using the open refine, but how they can contribute also in the project as mm -hmm. well. Um, so my next question would be, what, in what way do you think um, one could come in and um, contribute to the project, to the open refine project? Good question. Yeah, if you're more a technical person and if you indeed uh, have Java as a programming language, I would definitely, and you think like, oh, I want to try if I can contribute some code to OpenRefine, you can just go to our GitHub repository and we have a lot, a lot of open issues. Some of them are marked as uh, good for beginners, good first issue. So you can use the good, good first issue tag on uh, GitHub to find issues that are yeah, good for newcomers and uh, see if you if there's anything that interests you and uh, start working on that one. Um, another one that I would actually like to uh, advertise is even if you are not technical, but you speak um, a, a widely spoken language in Africa. I don't know um, if, if your native language is, an, is another language than English or French. And um, yeah, uh, then you can also help us very much and help other people who use OpenRefine by actually uh, translating the interface of OpenRefine. And you can do that. I think I added a link to the Etherpad, but I have to look for it. Oh, did I? I didn't. Um, you can translate OpenRefine. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have an interface. Uh, it's maybe you've used Translate Wiki before. Uh, it's not Translate Wiki, it's called Weblate. Um, I can look it up and uh, yeah, also paste it in the Etherpad. But uh, translating the interface to your language, especially if you speak a language that is spoken by a lot of people, um, that would help a lot. Uh, we don't have a lot of, I, I don't think even that we have good translation Arabic yet. So I don't know if there are Arabic speakers here in the room, but we would love to get more Arabic translation, but also, yeah, big the big African languages, I it would be fantastic. So, awesome, awesome, that's great. Um, Abubakar, I think your network is really poor. Um, maybe if you have a question, maybe just use the chat um, so we can see that the question. We're sure you will see the question and we respond. Um, I don't know if any other person have any question, but I guess from what you can hear, um, you can contribute um, from uh, in what's it called in terms of the documentation translation, right? Um, yes. to, uh, well, pre, uh, to any language you, you understand that is widely spoken and widely, um, yeah, widely understood, basically. Uh, you could do that. And yes, if you're a Java developer, you could also yes. <laughs> come in and, and see how to do, um, contribute. Um, can also contribute. 
Um, I think my other question I was I was also I wanted to ask was when you the version three point seven um, that is still uh, yet to be released. Is it um, what version do we have on pause, and is there a way to try the experimental version on pause as well? Mm, good question. Yeah, we have three point six point one, so we have the most recent stable version, but unfortunately not three point seven. Because yeah, it's constantly in development and it doesn't make sense to keep it up to date there. As soon as 3.7 is ready, we will make sure that it's <laughs> yeah, it's of, when it's officially released, we will ask the people from POST to install it as soon as possible. But now, unfortunately, not yet. So I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, then the question I had from yesterday actually was in terms of the tags, um, were you creating a new or uh, Often just reconciling the data as you know, the tags. What does in what way are we ever going to use the tags? Because I'm just assuming the tags is supposed to like um, kind of like if you're making a search, for instance, for an item like that has similar tag names, it should be able to come up. But then again, um, if those data is just for you then why the tags? I, I don't know, yeah. I'm just trying to get wrap my head around it. The tags are not super important. Uh, if you mean the tags for your projects, when you start a new project and you add tags, it's just for yourself. Um, if you are really, you know, into OpenRefy, you will very soon have like 20, 30, 40 projects. And maybe you want to go back to one about politics and it, you made it like five, five years ago or something like that. And then the tags will help to find it. But uh, don't bother. It's not super important. It's just a, a gimmick, I would say. Yeah, makes sense. Thank you so much. Um, I can see we've gone past way really past time. Um, thank you so much, uh, Sandra, for this wonderful, wonderful. Um, you can see even from the comments. Uh, I can tell that everyone here actually learns a lot. Um, personally, I, I I learned a lot, and it's something I will start employing in my daily life right now. Um, we find looks really easy and fun. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much. Um, let me stop the recording.